enslaved by the world and my greed. Then the door of my prison was opened by love. For the ransom was paid, I was free. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. I'm free from the guilt that I carry. From the dull, empty life I'm set free. For when I met Jesus, he made me complete. He forgot the foolish child I used to be. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of the past. I've traded my shackles for a glorious song. I'm free, praise the Lord, free at last. I've traded my shackles for a song. I am free, praise the Lord, free at last. With you, Jeremiah chapter number one. Now I'm going to have you stand. Let's read this one verse. I'll read this one verse. Jeremiah chapter one and verse number five. Jeremiah chapter one and verse number five. I'm letting, I'll let y'all catch up. I want to make sure everybody gets a chance. I'm going to ask you to read it with me. We're going to read it together. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse number 5. All right, you ready? Let's read it together. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for, for what, the life that we get to celebrate this week and how amazing it is. And just, just uh, I would have never thought honestly, and, and maybe a lack of faith on my part, but I never thought uh, that uh, we would ever see this overturned. I certainly prayed for it, uh, certainly voted um, in favor of, of, of those that would hopefully one day overturn it, but uh, never honestly thought that it would ever be turn, turned over uh, with the wickedness in our country. Um, but what a great day that we get to celebrate, and, and today, this afternoon service, help it to be a an encouragement to us, help us to respond correctly to this victory. And uh, Father, we just want to thank you so much for that. I am uh, excited to see what could be, what, what kind of revival could, could take place in our country with, um, with uh, all the, the lives that will be saved. We love you. We thank you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, an eventful week. You may be seated. Thank, thank the Lord for this week. Amen. We talked about Vacation Bible School this week. And being able to minister to the youth in our community, that wasn't just an exciting week. Every vacation Bible school, there's so much work involved uh, in it, but it is always so fun. You never hear workers grumble and complain, um, even though I know they're toiling with hard work or they've worked all day and, and, and you know, tacking it on. I, I don't think Brother Jonathan and Brother Caleb complained much because they were too tired to. Um, they may have thought about it. Maybe they complained and murmured in their hearts a little bit, but they couldn't utter the words for it. Uh, because they were so tired, but and Brother Caleb drove all the way to Chicago, got stuck in like a two and a half hour traffic jam, uh, and then drove back. And then uh, one day he had to go down to Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, and back. And uh, that tire, I mean, driving whips you. I mean, that whips you being on the road for a long time and still came back and 
And uh, I had to wake him up out of the back pew to get on the bus to go, but uh, amen, what a blessing, so thankful for this week. What, a, what an opportunity, what an honor, what a privilege the parents in our community uh, gave us, by allowing us to minister to their, to their young people, to their children uh, over this last week. I, heard, I sure hope that we always, always uh, uh, take that as an honor. I hope that we never, I under, there's a lot of churches that are very quick to dismiss the bus ministry and, uh, and sell their buses and it cost, it all cost money. I put diesel in that tank today and it was expensive. $200 barely got us a half a tank of fuel. And, um, and so I just, and that was, it was at a quarter tank. So $200 didn't get us much, you know, and the lady at the counter, the lady at the cash register was, Oh, bless your soul. And, uh, she was, she was, uh, I can't believe you're putting all that in there. And I said, you know, I, some people, they, you know, they, they give a, they have a broken heart for the truck drivers, but the truck drivers just pass that expense on. And truck drivers aren't footing that extra gas out of their own pocket. They pass that on to the uh, down, down the line, and we end up paying for that, and that's rightfully so. That's how economics works, and we understand that. It's not a big deal. Uh, but in the bus ministry, it is, it is a purely giving ministry. Uh, we, when we run out to get these kids, we're not getting any money in return. We don't want money in return. That's not what it's for. That's not what we're doing it. We're doing it because uh, we might save some. We might see some saved, I guess is the way to word that. And that's the only reason we're doing it. Hey, Amen. We're doing it to encourage young people. And if we could just see one of them get born again and along the way and serve, serve uh, God with their life, then it's worth every last ounce of diesel f uh, fuel that's put in those buses. I believe that because there is no, you can't put a price on a soul. And so, anyway, great week. I hope that we always keep that, take that as a privilege in this church. I hope that we always never look, look down on the bus ministry. Those rascal kids may leave uh, stains and stuff on the carpet. Probably no more than the pastor's kids do. But <laughs> uh, anyway, Brenna, wherever she's at. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it, you know they, they, they cause trouble. Hey, man, they, they destroy stuff sometimes. There's a lot of teaching involved. I didn't lose my, I mean, I lost my voice because I was yelling at him. No, I was, I was yelling with him. I really was. We were having fun. Um, but, you know, it, 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 hopefully we always count it a privilege to serve our community's youth. Amen. I hope that we never let the burden of it uh, hinder us or hurt us. Saw six young people make profession of faith this week. What a blessing. Oh, but something else happened this week that drastically changes the direction of our country. And uh, last Friday on uh, the 24th of June, the Supreme Court overruled Roe versus Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey. I'm glad to be able to tell you today that abortion is no longer a protect is pr no longer protected federally. Many states have laws on the books that automatically go into effect upon that overturning, which will ban uh, the murder of the unborn. And I understand that there's some people that are just vehemently opposed to this. And uh, it's important that we try to educate them and teach them that the Bible, the Bible is pro-life, always. Uh, if you say it's not, it's because you've got some other perversion. My Bible is pro-life very easily. And that's from the womb to the tomb. Amen. The Bible is pro-life. But it's important that, uh, that we are informed on, uh, on this so that we can give our answer intelligently. Uh, it's not about just winning. It's not about just being, you know, just getting a victory. We ought to know why. We ought to, we ought to understand some scripture. Uh, we ought to be able to give some sort of answer. Uh, we ought to be able to console. I appreciate your, your, your testimony, Sis, Miss Deb, that, uh, about that. You know, I, 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 I wish or hope or desire, I don't ever desire anybody to have hurt or lasting hurt. But at the same time, I guess there's part of me that say, I hope that you never not hurt a little bit because it's it, 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 that would mean you're numb to it. I think it's I think it's right. I mean, I, God will comfort us and God will it is forgiven as we ask the Lord to forgive us. Amen. And I, I hope that you know I do pray for comfort and, and I'm thankful for that. And I don't I don't think I'd want to be numb to that though. I'd want a little sting there just to you know that I, that it, I realize that. Uh, but oh, praise God for His grace and His mercy. And there's a lot of lot of Christian women just like Miss Deb. Uh, that uh, for, for whatever reason, they, they've, they've gone through that. And so, um, you know, the ruling actually reinforces our democracy. And I think a lot of people are getting all up in arms about this, but this ruling simply puts it back where it should have been to the state and federal legislatures uh, that are a representation of the people. And now we as states, we have the opportunity to, to vote in people that would, would align with our ideologies uh, and, and, and the opposed, they have the opportunity to do the same. 
and uh, and then those that represent us can write laws that that will uh, that will um, do that. There, um, you know, uh, federally as well, uh, the federal legislature can also write laws into uh, li- write laws into power or li- write laws into place that um, that will do the same as their representation of the nation as a whole. Uh, there's still several states that not that not only allow it, but will promote it, celebrate it, and even pay for those abortions. And so there's still work to do. Amen. It's important that Christians uh, continue to make our voices heard uh, at the state level. It's in, important that we understand that the ultimate goal should be an amendment to the Constitution of the United States that clearly protects the lives of the unborn, period. Amen. And uh, I know that's a huge task, but oh, praise the Lord. Uh, what a what a major step that happened this last week. The Lord pricked my heart as I was thinking about this, considering this event, a monumental event for our country, and thinking about our behavior and our response to this victory. You know, we teach our kids on how to not how how to be how to not be sore losers, right? Uh, but we also teach them. Or I, I I hope that we teach them the balance of winning well as well. Uh, I hope that we teach them how to graciously win. Um, as well and uh, and however of course because of how volatile our political climate is today there is a I think a real temptation for us to to snatch uh, to snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory and what I mean by that is we take such a wonderful victory uh, but then with our reaction we escalate the divisions in our country and rather rather than capitalizing on the spiritual need of fallen man and rather than taking the opportunity to share Christ and we, uh, we are gloating in the win. And so by the grace of God, I just want to give you three quick thoughts about what we should do uh, next as I preach on this thought. Life is winning. Amen. Life is winning. First thing is recognition. Hey, man, hey, listen, we need to praise God. This is exciting. Hey, man, believers, believers have been praying for this longer than I've been alive. Believers have been praying for this for 49 years, nearly 50 years. And praise God, God still answers prayer. And I, I, I'm excited. I'm thankful. There's for all the negative things I could say about our, our former president Trump with his attitude and demeanor and disposition and things like that, and some sometimes unchristian like behavior. How amazing it is that God put him there in a time where we'd get three good justices in there that would realize the the importance of life and be able to see that. Just amazing to me how how God just kind of goes to show in Corinthians where the Bible talks about uh, him using the baser things to confound the wise. How how true it is. Now who would have thought? I would have thought that a billionaire playboy would be used by God in, in, in that way. I mean, I'm not, I don't condone any of his bad, be, bad behavior or, or, or remarks or anything like that, but he governed well and, uh, and certainly in the area of putting in these uh, Supreme Court justices, certainly a lot to be thankful for and how God worked out a lot of the details. Counselors, too, I mean, he didn't just come up with those names on his own. There are some people that fed them names uh, that said, hey, these, these would be stand-up uh, justices to, to nominate. And so pretty neat how all that works but listen we pray him praise him for the lives that we spared and not all states uh, have uh, have abolished it no not all states will have laws against it uh, but the states that our michigan is one of them states that will instantaneously have a law that that prohibits abortion uh period and so and we know that uh, uh this is not uh an abolishment of abortion, uh, but many lives I do will, believe will be spared as a result of this. We praise him for the wisdom. We praise him for the courage that he gave to the justices. I don't know what their spiritual life is. I don't know if they're Christian. I don't know if they're born again. Uh, I don't know if they're a, a, some a, a, a claimed Christianity, but uh, lost because they're believing in work salvation. I don't know their spiritual needs. I don't know where they stand on things. Uh, but to, even while their lives had been threatened, they not only had discernment of what the Constitution says, because really this is a simple constitutional matter. This had absolutely, this was a bad, this was this was bad opinion when it was wrote back 49 years ago, and it should have been overturned a long time ago. The Constitution, the federal government had absolutely no 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 grounds for this anyway, and so they had enough discernment constitutionally, uh, but also they were willing to do the right thing no matter if it went against the popular culture or the mob culture, and. Um, you know, it's a, what, a, what a blessing, and we need to praise the Lord for that. It's never wrong. Can I tell you, dear, dear uh, brother and sister in Christ, it's never wrong to publicly or privately thank the Lord for his answer to prayer, even if God's answer is not celebrated by the world. Psalm 18, verse 49, the Bible says, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. 
Uh, Psalm 71 verse 6 says, uh, By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels by my praise shall be continually of thee. Amen. And I thought that was a great mixture of, of both the why we're praising the Lord today and the actual instance of praise. And in that same chapter, verse 14 says, but I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Amen. And I hope that we're, we're, we're praising God more and more. We have, we have so many reasons to praise today. And we had it the week before. And if it wouldn't have been favorable this week, we still would have had great reason to praise. Oh, but dear brother and sister, we have great reason to praise this week in this, in this, uh, in this overturn turning us a blessing. I'm praising the Lord for this news and I'll keep on praising him. I'll keep on rejoicing. What an exciting time to be living in. Amen. What an exciting time to be alive and be a Christian and be a believer. And we're about to experience either the rapture or revival. Amen. And both of those events are going to be a wonderful thing. And so we see uh, not only not only recognition, but also compassion. Amen. That being said, uh, our thanksgiving to God ought, not, ought to never be with the desire to rub a victory in the noses of those with opposing views. Amen. Uh, I think there's, there's a lot out there that are on the wrong side of this argument, and simply it is because they just don't know any better. Uh, I, was, I, I was on the wrong side of this uh, uh, argument coming out of high school uh, because that's what the teachers taught. And I'll just be honest with you, they indoctrinate you in the public school, and, uh, and the teachers, they taught that, that was, this, was, this was right. This was the woman's choice, and she should be able to kill the baby. And, and I, as, before I was even saved as a teenager coming out of the high school, I thought to myself, sure, man, I mean, why would I want to waste my time with a baby? And that was, that, was the mentality of the, the, that was the mentality of the school I went to. That was the mentality of many of my teachers. And uh, that was the mentality I adopted until I got born again and realized that was major error. And, uh, and need to be changed. And so I think there's many Christian women, as we've talked about with Ms. Deb, that, that in ignorance or in panic uh, have had abortions and they still grieve when the subject's brought up. And I'm sure most of them uh, are, are, are balancing celebration with regret this week, right? As, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be tactful on how we address this subject because I think there is many grieving women. I think there's, there's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of fear, uh, because our president and those uh, uh, on the on the left, you're not, you're not we're not in a mainstream Christian church today, Amen. We're an independent Baptist church, and uh, I believe if the Lord leads me to, to say something, not, no no government's going to restrict uh, this pulpit, Amen. Uh, our president, those on the left, they continue to spew out the narrative that the right and that Christians they're evil. Uh, and they're evil attack attackers of women's reproductive freedoms. Now, listen, I'm all for your re reproductive freedoms. Don't do what gets you pregnant. Hey, man, we got kids in here, so I'm just going to keep that clean. Don't do what gets you pregnant. Hey, man, I, that's all there is to it. Listen, we need to, we need to be sure that our answers and our commentary are seasoned with salt and offered in compassion. Hey, man, we're Christians. Remember that. Right, it's not our place to gloat. This this, uh, this Pride Month, uh, I'm not. I, I I'm very careful. I'm not proud to be an American. I'm, I'm thankful to be an American. I'm not proud to be straight. I'm thankful that God hasn't put that, that that my flesh has never steered me in that direction. It's not a battle of the flesh I have to deal with. Hey Amen. I'm I'm not I'm not proud to be a a believer, a Christian, or going to have. I'm thankful for that. Amen. And that's the attitude of the Christian. The Christian have no reason to be proud about anything. Amen. We need to be thankful. We need to be humble. We don't deserve what we have in this country. Amen. And uh, that's the mentality that we ought to have. We don't deserve that. that hey, listen, can I tell you, we don't deserve that, that uh, overruling of, of Roe v. Wade. You know what we deserve? We deserve fire and brimstone being rained down on this country and clean up the wickedness and the nastiness because we're not even close to cleaning up this place. I'm trying not to get too started here. I, I said I was going to go fast, okay? We're going fast. Listen, remember... Brother, Marv, you're outnumbered here, brother. <laughs> listen, remember many, many of these, many of these that, are, that have these opposing views, listen to this. Many of these that have their, their, these opposing views, they're simply lost in their sin and they're in need of a Savior. Hey, man, you know, I'm, not, I'm not out to try to win an argument on abortion. I'm out to win their soul to Christ. Right. Hey, Amen. I, 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 uh, you know, before my mom started serving the Lord, she was on the left side of things. Right? Ten years ago, then I knew I knew she was in a good church when she when she told me she was gonna that, that she wasn't mad at me for vote, voting for Bush again. Which you, I guess it was, you were right for me voting for Bush. He was kind of a worthless Republican anyway. But anyway, 
The first time I voted for him, she was mad at me. The second time she had gotten into church and the Lord was, was growing her and, and she realized that the, the right side of the aisle, the Christian side of the aisle here was, was life and liberty and, and, uh, and God changes souls. God changes lives. God changes minds. Amen. I'm not interested in changing a view. I'm in, interested in seeing their eternity changed by their faith in Jesus Christ as Savior because once they're saved, once they've accepted Jesus as their Savior, uh, then I believe that we can teach them what the Word of God says. Uh, because this, this matter of life is not a matter of opinion. It's a, it's a very clear biblical principle uh, that God is pro-life. It's very clear. There is no way, there is absolutely no way to explain it all out without completely ignoring Scripture or completely changing uh, Scripture, which, which would then be considered a perversion of Scripture, not a version of Scripture. So the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given. We need wisdom. Uh, we need discernment. We need wisdom so that when we praise the Lord for the saved lives, we still are able to shine the light of Christ for the lost to see. Amen? And uh, James chapter 3, verse 17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And so that wisdom that we're looking for, we see some, we see some uh, identifying factors of that wisdom. And I think it's very clear uh, in this as we're, as, that, that uh, we need to be compassionate with this wisdom. We need to be very careful. We need to be compassionate. We need to be peaceable, gentle. Uh, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if you're getting discernment that's uh, uh, contrary to that, then you might want to check your sources of wisdom. Amen? And biblical wisdom is going to come with those indicators. So we, we, cert, we see the recognition. Let's praise the Lord. What a, it is a wonderful thing to rejoice about. We see the compassion. Amen. Listen, we need, to, we need to remember this ain't about winning personally. Amen. This is about, this is about seeing lives saved uh, and a, a bigger picture out there, seeing souls saved. Amen. And thirdly, we need to remember action. Amen. Uh, we, got a great, we got a great victory We've enjoyed a great victory this week, but we're not done yet. Hey, man, there's still a lot of work to do. This country is still in a wrong direction in a major way. This is a great victory. It sure is. And, but I'll tell you, it's not going to, it's not, if, if we keep going in, if, just with this one change, we keep going in a direction we're going, we are still on course to the judgment of God. There's just no, there's just no, no question about that. With all the other vile, uh, immorality, perversions that are out there. We got transvestites uh, that are teaching our children and reading stories to them like it's so cute, like a five-year-old needs to know anything about sexuality. I mean, absolutely ridiculous where we're at in our country today, and it's being promoted. It's being, it's being. I mean, I think it's, uh, it, it's sickening. You, every ad uh, is uh, for this month. They, you know, all, you see all these, all these woke uh, corporations that are. They don't care about their their uh, uh, orientation. They don't care about that agenda. They care about the money, and they're willing to just uh, go woke. But I'll tell you what, the more that are going woke, the more I'm trying to make them go broke. Amen? Now, listen, we need to remember there's a lot of work to do. The victory for the unborn will not be complete until it is completely and totally abolished in this land. And they say, oh, the, the, the argument goes, well, what about, what about this? Well, this, and I'm trying to keep it careful with our kiddos in here, right? This, and y'all know what I'm talking about, takes up about 1% of abortions, right? Uh, or less than 1% of abortions. And so don't give me that. If you wanted to, if you wanted to negotiate, and we can negotiate, negotiate that in all in our country, that that 99% was completely abolished, I'd sit down to the table with you at least for a minute until we could get the other percent later. But if that's where we had to start, I'd be okay with starting there, but that's never, they're never okay with that argument. That's just what they use to throw it in our face to make us look like we're not compassionate. Uh, the vast majority of them is, is they don't want to take care of the responsibility of, of what, they, what they did. And uh, I understand sometimes it's in panic. Uh, sometimes it's in fear of what parents will do. Sometimes it's coerced. I understand there's a lot of different variables in there, but I'll be honest, I think there's a vast majority of them there are just completely celebrated. It's absolutely vile uh, that they just, no, oh, I'm just going to go, I do whatever I want to do, and then I got a way of fixing it if uh, it doesn't turn out favorably for me. And that's disgusting, and it's wrong, and it's wicked. Uh, listen, we need to, in, in this area of action, we need to keep praying. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And this is certainly an area in which we need to keep lifting up to the Lord in prayer. We need to keep soul winning. Amen. Our responsibility hasn't changed. 
Uh, this has not altered the, the course of the local New Testament church. We are still a vehicle to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to the lost and dying in our communities. Nothing has changed there. We still need to get out there. And the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. That is still our responsibility. That is still our commission. It has not been fulfilled. And that is, that is the charge that we have before us today. Amen. Genuine believers have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling in them who can guide them into all truth. It'll be much easier convincing a born-again believer uh, of the truth that God is pro-life than it will be trying to convince a lost person that is without the, the truth, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God uh, about that same uh, issue. Uh, listen, in this area of action, we need to be informed for voting purposes. Uh, I, listen, I try. We don't. We don't spend a whole lot of time getting very political around here. We don't. I don't think we need to. Uh, but I do believe that it's our. Uh, not only is it our right as American citizens, uh, but I believe it's our responsibility because this is not a, a typical monarchy, right? This is a country where we own this. This is our country. This is the country of we the people, right? And so, in the principle of stewardship, we have a responsibility. Uh, from the biblical principle of stewardship, if this is our country, then we have a responsibility to be informed on how to vote and to, and to exercise our right to make sure that we're voting and we're getting in candidates that are, that are pro-life and believers and, and pro-Christianity and pro-religious freedoms and, and all of those things. We need to be informed for the voting purposes. We need to make sure that we exercise our right to vote. Amen. We can't get lazy on election day. It's, uh, we need to get out there. We need to go to those polls. I know it's inconvenience. I know sometimes you got to take a little bit of time away from work or whatever to do it, but it is important to exercise uh, that right and responsibility as American citizens. We also need to consider as Christians if God is leading us into some sort of uh, public uh, service. I saw a, a brother post something the other day I thought was interesting. Man, there is no greater time ever than to get some born-again believers that are willing to run for public office. And uh, in, in this day, we need some believers that, that are willing to stand on the truths of God's word to say, hey, I'll serve our community. I'll serve our local Comstock area. I'll serve our state. I'll, 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 I'll do whatever is necessary. There's a lot of people being, they don't have very much political experience, but they're still getting voted in because they're just simply willing to stand upon truth. And uh, they don't even have to have a lot of experience. They're just saying, hey, you'll vote down the, down the lines of right, uh, and you'll get informed as you, as you need to, and you'll, you'll vote right. I'll vote for you. Hey, Amen. I, I voted in, uh, I wrote in uh, Brother Leon on the last uh, supervisor uh, uh, vote. So uh, I, wrote in, I wrote in Brother Leon because I didn't like either of the candidates over there. I was hoping he'd get the office, but <laughs> I'll tell you later, brother. Uh, but we need, we need to consider if, if God would call us into that uh, as a Christian, if that would be something the Lord would lead us into a, a, a time of public service. We need to support and pray about fostering and adopting. And I know this is a huge sacrifice, and I'm not, it's not for everybody. There might not be a single person in this church that the Lord would call on, on to do that, but we ought to be prayed up about it. Amen. If we, we, we support or we show our support for life with our actions. And uh, adoption is one of those ways. Fostering is one of those ways where we show our support uh, for them. At the very least, try to find some good organization and try to be a support to that if we can. If there's, if there's a way of doing that without, without compromising our, our biblical stand. I personally don't give any money to organizations outside of the local church because I haven't found one worthy of it, I suppose. But uh, I, I think, uh, you know, that's something that, that we ought to pray about and make sure that we listen. I, I understand not everyone can foster or adopt, but we should be praying uh, praying for the supply, praying for the resources, and praying if the Lord would have us to do something like that. And we need to remember that as the, as the babies are increasingly getting to enjoy their life, adoptions will be on the rise as well uh, because they will still be giving them up for adoption, which I would much rather have that than the alternative. And uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather them be able to go to good homes. I know there's lots of men and women. I know there's lots of Christian men and women out there that can't have babies. And that would be glad. I'd be glad. I pray that our country would get to a place to make it a little easier and a little less, less costly to, uh, to, for some of these adoptions to take place. I know Brother uh, Rich and, and Ms. Vonda uh, adopted. I, I thought they said something like $10,000 or something per kid. It's, it's not cheap. And so uh, initial, initial balance. And, and then uh, raising kids aren't cheap either. Amen. So, uh, but uh, we need to remember uh, that. And then thirdly, uh, we need to display a Christ-like attitude everywhere we go. Amen. This just kind of goes back to that compassion. It goes back to how to praise right. Now, this ain't about us winning uh, in, in the sense of us, us some personal victory. Amen. This is not about to say, ha, 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 
and we got the victory. That is a wrong and bad attitude. It's not a time to get on Facebook and go go post on every uh, left winger's uh, uh, page that uh, that we that we have befriended or that we're, that are on our friends list and rub in that they that they lost this bad. That's not the time for that. That's not how you do it. I praise God publicly. I'm okay with that. That's right, and that's good. We praise God no matter if it's something that the world don't like. That's okay. I'll give praise the Lord, but I'm also going to be very careful to have a Christ-like attitude everywhere I go. I want to reach people for the cause of Christ. I want to share Christ with them. I want, I want them to get born again. Amen. They get born again. I, I do believe that, uh, that uh, it'll be easy to teach them what the Bible says once they have the Spirit of God indwelling in them. That's it. Amen. That was it. I told you it wasn't going to be that long. Uh, just a, a few thoughts for this exciting time. Amen. What an exciting time that we live in. I sure hope that it'll help you tonight. Uh, I will. Have, let's have a time of, a time of, uh, of invitation. I think we, we ought to take just a moment of prayer and uh, just rejoice about this. Uh, um, but also be praying that the Lord would continue to, to, to see victories for life and, uh, and give us and help us to be a part of that and help us to be an active uh, part of that. Would you stand with me? Let's go ahead and take just a few moments, a couple moments here in invitation. If the Lord's giving you a burden in your heart about something to come to an altar for, then do that. <clears throat> if you pray at your seat, then do that. Uh, but let's take a moment to just, just uh, uh, pray. And, uh, and thank God for his victory. Thank God for this victory, but also pray for how we, how we can continue to add to uh, this, this major need in our country. Miss Jen, when she begins to play, this altar is open. How's the Lord work on your heart? How's the Lord helped you today? Maybe, you need, maybe, maybe you've had, maybe you've, I, I understand with the volatile climate that we're in, maybe you were tempted to rub it in people's faces. Maybe you needed to come and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I, that wasn't the right Thing. Help me to have a right and Christian attitude. Help me to be compassionate. Help me to have a burden in my heart. 